Welcome to GMs for Hire. I am Matthew Perry. Joining me today is Barstool's own Frank the Tank Fleming. Frank, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, of course, I was hoping to see Jacob DeGrom pitch tonight, but that's not going to happen now. Uh, uh, after a day of just, just steamy, steamy, steamy weather, uh, some storms rolled in and have not rolled out. Yeah, no DeGrom tonight, no Mets tonight, but tomorrow, you said, uh, as you uh, mentioned to me earlier, we're going to have a double header. So that's double baseball. That'll be fun, uh, two seven-inning games. But before we get into and the it's Mets, a, And it's a separate emission double header, which is... No, I don't like those. Uh, the Yankees did that last week. and They did it on Sunday. Yeah, they did it on Sunday. And, and it was pure fucking chaos. Yeah, I mean... Let me, well, you were, let me you tell were you. there, weren't you? I went to the first game, yeah. and uh, since I was going to the first game, I figured, hey, why don't I see if I could get into the second game, and I did. But you had to leave the stadium, and while we're leaving the stadium after the first game, feds are already lined up for the second game. But they had to clean up the stadium for the, uh, from the first game. Right. So we're trying to get into the second game, and it's just pure chaos. Yeah, I typically feel like with double headers. And, and, and keep in mind, it's a seven inning game, so people aren't getting into the stadium until like the third inning. Meanwhile, I got in. I got in. Uh, Mr. Fir- the, the the top of the first. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the concession lines at uh, Yankee Stadium don't fucking move. I mean, I mean, uh, the, these people who run the Yankee Stadium concessions are glacial. What do you order at uh, the concession stand at Yankee Stadium? I didn't order anything on the second game. The line was too long. But if you if, if it wasn't long and the well, uh, I got two hot dogs which I'm gonna uh, 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 the, which I reviewed were bleh. yeah I saw your review at at the trial. And then I got the uh, the steak sandwich at Labelle's I think it is yeah decent mm-hmm. yeah yeah the I steak saw your... at, the steak at City Field is much better yeah I've yet to go to City Field. Um, and I haven't tried the steak sandwich in Yankee Stadium, so I'll take your word for it. I saw your hot dog review at the Trop at Tropicana Field. I, yeah. I I live down here in Florida. I'm not too. I'm like an hour from the Trop, so I I'm there much more than I am you know up there with you at Yankee Stadium. Um, you didn't like the Trop. I watched that video. You did not like Tropicana Field. Yeah, no? it's kind of a dump. It's not that bad. You got to No, it's a dump. <laughs> Is it the dome? Is it? What is it for you? It's got the atmosphere of a playing baseball in a Costco warehouse. You don't like Costco? Not for baseball. I guess that's fair. I mean, what game did you see that day? The uh, Saturday uh, game between the Mets and the Rays. Not a bad. I, I mean, <sighs> compared to other domes, whether it be retractable roof or fixed roof, and, and to me, this day and age, there should be no fixed roof stadiums. It should all be retractable. I agree. If you had, I mean, I'm I'm disappointed that uh, Minnesota built a retractable roof for the uh, for the uh, Vikings. Yep. <laughs> you're, you're curiously, the Twins have an open air stadium, but uh, I mean, it's the new stadium Texas built doesn't look very good to me. But but look at uh, stadiums like. Uh, Milwaukee. When it like, opens up, it like they open up panels, and you get like a, a you you feel like uh, you don't feel like you're in a in a dungeon. Yeah, I, I've yet to go to any of those stadiums you mentioned. And then um, you got but... the you got the catwalks, and those catwalks just get in the way. That's true. They do get in the way quite often on fly balls and stuff like that, but. I, I guess it's part of the game. I don't know. I Yeah, I'm not a big fan. I Okay, so I like the Trop because it's local, but I definitely see where you're coming from, that it's not the right atmosphere um, for baseball, and the catwalks definitely get in the way. The Yankees have had enough of those problems. I'm a Yankees fan. I don't know if you could tell from the background, but uh, so we'll, we'll talk Mets, uh, some un- unbiased Mets talk, because I'm, I'm, I have no, no bias towards the Mets. So you guys are currently 44 and 37. You know, you're four games up. 
I wouldn't feel safe with this lead. What what do you think the Mets can do moving forward to kind of pad the lead? Uh, maybe make a trade to get another bat. Who would you go get? I don't know. Um, someone like Kato Marte, uh, Chris Bryant. I, yeah, I think Chris Bryant would be good for you guys. Yes, because, because the Cubs, the Cubs are completely imploding. Yeah, they they're down what seven nothing. Oh, they're down nine three right now. And with yeah. uh, with all the impending free agents they have, they are they they're, they're, they're going to probably be major sellers. You would think, yeah, they've lost ten in a row. Chris Bryant gone. You think Rizzo? You think they trade Rizzo? Rizzo could probably go, but he doesn't fit on the Mets. Yeah, I don't think you guys need a first baseman right now. Well, yeah, definitely not. Now, I could definitely see Rizzo and Pinstripes next year. I wouldn't hate that. Uh, I like Voight, but, I mean, I'm sure we can move some stuff around. <laughs> I think we see the real Voight this year. Well, okay, yeah, I mean, last season was a short um, sample size, but he played really well in that sample size, so it's hard to gauge what he really can bring. And, obviously, this season he's been battling injuries, so – who knows what, what, what and, we'll uh, see from him. Anthony Rizzo has a family in North Jersey. Oh, so that would work. You're a you're a native of, of New Jersey, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, uh, members of the Rizzo, of uh, Anthony Rizzo's family run a place that sells Italian ices near here. Oh, really? Yep. Is that any good? Yeah, probably one of the better places to get a tie nice. Nice, nice, good. That's good stuff. Uh, if I visit, I'll have to go. Uh, I I saw a tweet um, that you made the other day. It might have just been because the Mets lost, but uh, what makes Yankee Stadium a dump? Well, the Mets split the game. It just it just is not as nice as City Field. Uh. As, uh I sat in uh, the, the handicap section in uh, City Field. That's my normal seats. And the handicap um, seat yeah. at Yankee Stadium, and it's basically the same seat, same section. The one at Yankee Stadium feels like I'm a mile away from the field. The one at uh, City Field is much nicer. Well, that's fair. But besides how you feel, uh, like atmosphere towards the field – is there anything that bad about Yankee Stadium compared to City Field? Like you compare them side by side with like food, um, cleanliness, atmosphere, you know, I'm sure you're biased towards City Field, but like, is Yankee Stadium that far off? You know, I remember uh, most of my life, Shea Stadium being a dump and Yankee Stadium being this majestic cathedral. Mm-hmm. And they did not recapture that with the new stadium. I'd say, yeah, it has a different feel to it for sure. It's got a, well, it's more modern. So you got the, you got these, uh, the, at City Field, if you're at the concession, you basically can look out onto the field. Can't do that at Yankee Stadium, especially when you're on the field level and they put up those, uh, that wall so you don't uh, bother the, uh, the rich people. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a fair point. I'll, I'll say that uh, that's fair. Do you prefer Shea Stadium or City Field? City Field. Just because it's it, – well, what's the, what's the uh, deciding factor for that? Just how modern and cozy City Field is. I'll ask this. Uh, who's your favorite Yankees player? Currently? Currently, all time. Give me what you got. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone I really like on the current team. Judge? I mean, Judge is a fan favorite. Yeah, Judge is all right. I, I mean, I don't dislike him. How do you feel about Garrett Cole? Spider tech. Spider tech. Garrett Cole's not shit without spider tech. Once they started checking, he started sucking. Look out. They took his spider tag. Checked his hand. He has none. And ever since, he's not one. Awesome. Yankees are totally screwed. Now that Garrett Cole can't use spider tag, look out. He doesn't have spider tag. 
you gave me the whole song on that. I, I knew I was gonna get that. I just I didn't know if you're gonna break out the whole the whole verse. Uh, do you think? Well, do you actually think that Garrett Cole's, you know, not well? Obviously, he's different without the substance. But do you think he can recover from this? Because obviously, it's a change. You know, you're used to. Uh, well, I think I think I think what we got is a a a a commissioner that is just absolutely as dumb as dog shit. I agree. I I, I totally agree. I do not like Rob Manfred in the slightest. And uh, to change the rules midstream, midstream in the middle of the season is just so asinine, so dumb, so ridiculous. I mean, no wonder everything is so screwed up. Yeah. And uh, it's gonna, it, uh, and he's still an all star. I mean, maybe he could find a way to, 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 to straighten himself out after the all star game, but that might be, that might be uh, asking a lot. A lot. I mean, uh, he really need, uh, he really needs to straighten out somehow. Yeah, well, because it's not even just Garrett Cole, but all pitchers. You know, you change it mid season, the rules on substances, and they continue to change the balls. These pitchers can't get comfortable. They can't, you know, get used to something if Manfred keeps changing it. And doing it midseason was terrible. I, I really – I know it was a big problem and it needed to be addressed, but the fact that – How about stop fucking with the baseball? That would help, and that would help uh, the pitchers not need spider tack and other substances because, I mean, main, the main reason that most of the pitchers gave for stuff like that, whether it's rosin and sunscreen or spider tack, is just because they need a grip on the ball and they keep – changing you know the size of the seams and all that texture of the ball it's going to keep throwing pitchers off and it doesn't help anybody really in the end i mean it's 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 totally disgraceful it's yeah i mean i don't know what to do like i don't know what manfred's going to do about it because we have i I believe the cba expires at the end of the season yep and so there could be a there could be a protracted battle yeah, there's a lot to talk about um, with the balls and, and the rule changes and the pace of play stuff that gets mixed reactions. The How do you feel about the ghost runner in extra innings? I don't like They it. need to get rid of that. I'm not a fan of it. Um, the the seven-inning no-hitter has, has um, grown on me a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the seven-inning double-headers, I don't mind that much but uh uh they they the seven inning double headers should be you pay two games one uh, one ticket not split double headers if you play a split double header then you should have to play nine innings yeah well i mean nine innings or seven i really don't think single admission double headers should exist because because think about it like a game like tonight with the mets you get rained out you know for you know for the inconvenience they should let you see two games i feel like it's yes better. Some yes. fans sat, you know, games and then three hours. I mean, I mean, if it's a split doubleheader, and they kick you out, and you had to get back in for the second game, and you miss an inning or two, it's not as bad as missing an inning or two in a seven inning game. Yeah, because that's that's definitely a bigger part of the game. So for I've never been to a single admission doubleheader, so you have to leave and come back in. Yes. That. that you know how inefficient that is? I mean, that's... I experienced it firsthand on Saturday, and it was a clusterfuck. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I I, I don't like those. I mean, I don't think that's an MLB thing. That's, I guess, the teams decide that. But I don't support any single admission double letter. I don't think that's fair at all. I mean, I could definitely see how that causes problems. Who was your favorite player growing up? Growing up, uh, might have been like someone like Howard Johnson, Keith Hernandez, Dwight Gooden. Dwight Gooden. I I don't know how old you are, but you were how old were you uh, for eighty six? Ten, almost oh. eleven. So you probably have some good memories from that. Yes. Where were you when you saw him win it? You were home. What was that? Do you remember where you were when when they won it? Yep, I was home. You were home with family. Yes. It's a good moment. It's a good moment. I'll ask a, a, a couple of Barstool questions just because, you know, that, that's big for you. Uh, How did you join Barstool? Because I, I know you started, um, you were originally a, a court clerk, right? Yep. Something yep. Like uh, my Well, my viral video got Barstool's attention and they started started working for them part time. And then eventually uh, last year, 
I got the chance to go uh, full time. Okay. You, you've been enjoying it, I'm guessing. It seems like you're having a lot of fun. Yes, yes, I am. Cool. Who, who wins in a fight? I want to ask this one. Who wins in a fight? Jared Carabas or Eric Hubs? Mm. Maybe Carabas. You think so? You think the rocket takes him? Yeah. That's that's a good answer. I I I I am almost positive I'll be having uh Hubs on for an interview next week. So I'll be sure to see what he thinks of that. Um is there who do you think you who can you beat in a fight? Uh, I don't think I could beat anybody. I'm too slow. No? You don't think you could take Tommy Smokes? Yep. I think you could take Tommy. Eh, I'm too slow. You're too slow? I like yep. I I wouldn't doubt you. I might put some money on it. What are three things you take on Desert Island? What? Three things you take on a desert island. Three things I take on a desert island? Yep. A um, a satellite phone, uh, a generator. Fair. And a computer. Where are you plugging in any of those things? Well, that's what the generator's for. <laughs> what, what, what happens when the generator goes out? Then you have uh, gasoline. Or you do like uh, fucking uh, the professor did and uh, uh, build a bicycle that uh, that uh, you also get your your, um, your steps in. That's a good idea. I, I think that would work out. The All Star Game's coming up. Uh, you mentioned to me uh, Edwin Diaz and Taiwan Walker, who are yeah, both should be on the All Star team. Both should be. Give me your best. Cut a promo for me. Give, give me your best re, uh, reasoning. Give me your spiel as to why they should be all stars. Edwin Diaz has been nearly perfect in save situations. The trumpet sound, and it taps for the opposing team. While Taiwan Walker has been a great number two man for the Mets, reliable ERA in the twos. What more can you say? I mean, that's a, I, I think it was a great signing. I mean, obviously looking back, Taiwan Walker signing with the Mets. I mean, you got, yes, it was. Him. Yes, it was. Because it could have been Bauer and we see what's going on with Bauer and he's not even, he's not. Bauer is trash. Yeah. How'd you feel about him trolling you guys with the whole, you remember? He's Rob, an asshole. He's an asshole. He's an asshole. I'm excited to see the first time he comes to City Field, though. I, I think he'll get a Well, it may not be this year after this is a whole fiasco. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Um, but who knows? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna comment on that, but it's definitely a sticky situation that that Bauer's gotten himself into. Yes, it is. I do look forward to seeing him play the Mets, though, because there's obviously tension, you could say. Here's a uh Here's a, uh, a conspiracy theory. Yeah. He had this woman uh, make those false charges so he didn't have to pitch without sticky stuff on his hand and he could get suspended with pay as he tries to uh, make the adjustments maybe next year after everything clears. That is uh, that's a massive conspiracy. Uh, I don't I don't know how we'd be able to test that. Uh, I mean, of course, it's not true, but, you know. You never know. <laughs> it's a nice, I mean, it's not a nice thought, but it, it would definitely be an interesting turn of events. Uh, that it would be. That it would be. Uh, what's the best Mets game you've been to? Best Mets game I've been to. I remember going to a Met Yankee game at Yankee Stadium when the Mets hit like six homers, including Eli Marrero mm. off of Randy Johnson. That's a name. What? That had to be what, like 2005? 2006. 2006. Uh, opening day 1998, Alberto Castillo, game winning hit in a one nothing game in the 14th inning. Wow. Pitcher's duel. I, I love a yep. pitcher's duel. What about, what's your least favorite Mets game you've been to? 2003 opening day, they lost 15 to 1. Wow. Who'd they play? Cubs. Cubs. If I'm not mistaken, it was Corey Patterson had like two home runs, uh, 11 total bases, just absolutely just crushed them. I remember the name Corey Patterson. The Cubs, I mean, the Cubs were real good that year. So 
definitely makes sense. Yeah, Tom Glavin's Met debut. Not very good. He panned out, though, I'd say. Yeah, not until that last game. His last game was just as bad. Yeah, well, ups and downs. But uh, before we go, do you think, do you confidently think the Mets can win the division this year? They should be able to win the division, yes. You think so? Do you think DeGrom breaks Bob Gibson's ERA record? That's a tough one. I'm hoping to see it. I would love to see history. I think that's that a tough one. Great. This is probably the best we've seen a pitcher pitch in a long time. I, I mean, I mean, if his ERA ends up 1.20, it's, it's, it's still a great season, but it doesn't break the record. Do you think Syndergaard will be ready for the playoffs? I don't think so. Don't think so. He'll be ready for opening day, though, next year. Well, he may, he'll be a free agent first, unless he, the Mets give him a qualifying offer, which he would probably accept. Yeah, do you, well, that, yeah that was going to be my next question. Do you think he resigns? Uh, the only way he resigns is if there's a, quali- if the, if there's a qualifying offer. If he doesn't resign with the Mets, what team would you see him going to? One year deal to like Oakland. Oakland? You think Oakland? I was gonna say back to the Blue Jays where he started. They could use another arm, and I think a small deal, like a, a one to three year deal for. Uh, well, yeah, but if he misses two consecutive seasons with Tommy John surgery, he's not gonna have a lot of deals. Well, I, yeah, he's he's not going to make a lot of money off this deal, and that's obviously if he doesn't take the qualifying offer. But I mean, I think he could help the Blue Jays. They they'd be taking a risk just because he's been a bit injury prone, but it might be a risk worth taking. Well, the NBA just gets softer and fucking softer. What happened? Chris Paul took a three point shot. He landed on Brock Lopez's foot. And they called him Brock Lopez for a flagrant foul. A flagrant for landing on, for getting his, for CP3 landing on his foot? Yes. On a three-point jump shot. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. I don't, the refer, the refereeing in, in the NBA playoffs has been all over the place, really. non-existent at times and then do stuff like that i mean yep it's really weird but i think that's about it um i'll wrap it up why not uh frank thank you for your time it's been a lot all right i'll talk to you later all right for james fryer i've been matthew perry we'll see you guys next time bye